All right, this is another one of our videos and how to use some of the tools properly. This is for all of my classes, the construction and the welding classes. I'm Mr. B. This is the Eunice High School shop and we're going to talk about using hammers and screwdrivers. Two of the tools that everyone has in their house and that everybody will be using. Now, first thing before we start, if you'll remember from our safety videos, when we talked about loose clothing, loose clothing, I'm going to pull this up. I have glasses on. I have my goggles over my glasses. So those of you that wear glasses, this is the preferred look these days. Okay, so let's talk about hammers first. In the tool ID, there are different size hammers based on the weight of the head. In this case, this is a seven ounce hammer. The wooden handled one here is a 13 ounce hammer. This one, I believe, is also a 13 or 14 ounce hammer. It doesn't say right here because the tag has been worn off. And this is what happens. I don't know if you can see this. But this hammer has been struck on the handle and that comes from improperly holding it. And then finally I have this wonderful roofer's hammer, ripping hammer right here. Okay, first off, holding the hammer. You hold the hammer down here at the bottom of the handle. Most of my students, people that I see all the time, they want to hold the hammer way up here. When you hold the hammer up here, your arm becomes the handle, and it takes more effort to pound the nail. Also, the handle is ergonomically created, there's a nice word for you, ergonomically created for you to hold it here at the base. So we're gonna take a nail, and I have my, those of you that have had me for construction in eighth grade will recognize this 4x4 four four here. This is an old 4x4 four four we use purposely to pound nails into. Okay, nails. When you go to the store nowadays, you buy nails based on the length. These are two and a half to three inch nails. Used to, you would buy nails based on the weight. Six penny, eight penny, ten penny, twelve penny. The weight was how many pennies it took to equalize a pound of the nails. So here we go. To do a nail, you're gonna set the nail. We're gonna hold it, two fingers, we're gonna tap. Just like that, we're gonna set the nail in. Then I'm going to it in. If I miss, it's okay as long as I don't miss where the handle is hitting the work. We want the head to hit the nail. Now if I held this up here, this is what a lot of people want to do. They just want to tap it. Boy, that takes a lot of effort. Which brings me to the next thing. You see how we have this here? If you get a nail and you want to pull it out, we do not want to do this if you want to ruin the nail. We're going to take a piece of wood, just a scrap piece, hook our hammer onto our nail, and we're going to lever it out, and guess what? That nail is not that badly bent that I can't tap it straight and use it again. Okay, seven ounce hammer. This is more for doing tacks, upholstery nails, finishing nails, some lightweight little nail or fastener that we want to use. 13 ounce hammer. I think you'll notice a difference. done. 
real professionals though, and I am not one, and that's the disclaimer. I don't claim to be a professional. I do what I need to do to get the job done. But real professionals, it's tap, strike, and I missed. And the more comfortable you get, the farther back you'll go, the more power that you can impart to get this down. Roofers, professionals using these that do this all the time, it's one tap, one blow, we're all in. And the really good ones, they set it, they hammer it in, it's done. One blow. So that's hammers. Okay, now I'm going to get you, and I'm going to bring you closer, and we're going to move you where you can actually see what I'm up to here. Okay, let's talk about the wood for a minute. We want to be careful when we're nailing and when we're doing our operations. We want to look at the grain. The grain is the lines. These are the growth rings in the wood. We want to be careful because we can actually split this wood by hammering in here. Now, if it's long, even grain like this, we shouldn't have much of a problem. However, if you look at this, you'll see that this goes all the way through. It is possible that if I were to hit this, I can break it. And I broke this in the middle where you can see there's no grain here, and this is the weakest part of the wood. This also happens to be between two knots. Knots are where the branches came out of the trunk of the tree. And one thing about knots, and I'll show you right here on this one, there's a knot right there. There's also one down here, but let's just look at this knot. Sometimes students want to try and hammer in the knot. A knot is a super dense piece of wood. And, oh darn, I have just broken this piece of wood because, mm, it smells good though, because of that knot. We try and stay away from knots, if at all possible. If we have to do anything with a knot, what we will end up doing, if the knot is in our way, we will take a drill, and we will put a pilot hole through the knot, if at all possible. And then we will nail through it, or we will screw through it. Okay, so hammers, make sure you're holding it properly. Make sure you have your eye protection, because this is metal on metal. But now let's talk about screws. And I'm going to be using Phillips head screws, but just let me show you really quickly here. This is a standard screwdriver, a blade screwdriver. When I was growing up, this was called a flathead screwdriver. They come in different sizes based on the fastener that you're using. Some, like this one here with the black tip, these are magnetized so that you can... Oh, it should be magnetized. That's not that magnetized. But this is made so that it will grip what it's going into. I think this one's magnetized. Yep, that's magnetized right there. All right, Phillips head. Phillips, or the cross hatch, or the cross point, one of the things I want you to look at, I think you can see it right there, this screwdriver's been abused. This screwdriver, let me pull that back just a little bit, nice, not worn, 
This one's worn. It's worn because students like to do this. They like to not seat the screwdriver into the head of the screw. And then when it gets tough, then they get it at an angle or they get tired and they get anxious and then they'll just start twisting it like that. All that does is wears off the parts of the blade. It wears off the lands on the inside of the head of the screw. We want to make sure that we're always in a straight line. We want to make sure that we are pushing down and we're going to take our time with our twisting action. Now that one I use the existing hole. When we get down here to the wood, we want to see if we can get the head flush with the wood. Now to start one of these, if you have to start it on the wood, we're going to, whoops, get this seated. That's not seating. Oh, and that's because, I don't know if you can see that, this screw has got a fault. The cross hatch is not all the way through. That happens, especially when we're importing them. So we want this seated. We're going to take our screw. We're going to push slightly to get it started. And then we're going to, and I usually use two hands to guide it, but then we're gonna screw it down. And you can hear it. A couple of tricks if you don't wanna split the wood. Pilot hole with a drill. Cheap dishwashing detergent, liquid dishwashing detergent. You take a drop and put it on the screw and it lubricates it as it goes through the wood. Wow, things that you learn. And there we are, flush with the top of the wood. To remove the screwdriver, we're just gonna, the screw, we're just gonna go backwards. Okay, I think we've got that. Uh, one trick that you will see people do is they'll take a screw and they will gently tap on it with a hammer. The problem with that is, is that you are pushing this down into the wood and you're using the diameter of the screw to collapse those wood grains. Doesn't work very well. If you know what you're doing, it's just a light tap to get it started, then you can use that. I prefer to stay away from the hammer if at all possible. Okay, when we talk about a pilot hole, we're gonna take a drill that is slightly smaller than the diameter of our screw because we want the flats, the blade part of the screw, which is just an auger going around and around. This is a continuous piece of steel we want that to bite into the wood while the main part of the screw, the shaft of the screw, has a place to go on ahead and go down. When you're doing a pilot hole, I'm only going to go through here and start it into the four by four. I am not going to go the whole distance of the screw. I want the screw to actually bite into the wood and pull the two pieces together. Oops, there's that broken screw again. Let me get rid of that. I want the screw to actually bite into the wood and pull the two pieces together. That's why this is called a fastener. We're going to fasten these two pieces together. See, and I'm slipping occasionally. So I'm just going to stop and reseat and go on down. And there we go. Now, one last thing. We talk about power drills. I see students do this all the time. They think that when they start their screw, whoop, wrong way, and then they get down here and then it does 
They won't go and they start doing that and the faster they go. No, it doesn't work. All it does is ruin the screwdriver bit and it ruins the head of the screw. If it starts to slip, stop, reseat it. This back part of the drill is made to put your hand on top, push down, pull the trigger, and go. We're not in a race here. All right, so nails, hammer use, screws. Really short video because these are two of the major things that I keep seeing. Hold the hammer at the end of the handle. Don't be afraid to hit. Just try not to hit the handle on the edge of the work. We can hit the head anywhere. But if we hit the handle, we're going to break the handle one of these days. Plus, we're going to force the head to come loose. And that is not a good thing. All right, that's all for this video.